What is up guys, Noli here, and welcome to another episode of Road to Ranked. Of course, this is the Silver Season. This is game three, last game you saw a support tank Sobek. This game, I'm going to show you something even better in the support tank role. It is support tank Wukong. So Wukong is an extremely versatile warrior. He's basically a reasonably large uh, damage dealing physical bruiser, but the amount of damage he can dish out is nothing compared to the amount of damage he can afford to take so this is me playing on the blue side on our team we have a cupid as the range physical who's of course going to be in lane with me a fenrir who's really come out lately as one of the more powerful gods in the jungler role we have a freya in the solo lane and a jonqui in mid and that caps off the team for blue red team has a duo lane composed of a sobek and a and her. Uh, it's quite a powerful combination. Lots of crowd control. They have a mid Nuwa, which is extremely interesting because she's one of my favorite gods in the game, but she's also one of the worst, without a doubt. A, I believe, solo lane Ra, yeah, and a jungle tier. So I start off with the Watcher's Gift, uh, which is quite a standard start. And we can see both teams are grouping up at the mid camps. Uh, except I notice as the blue buff comes up and I start on it that the enemy team is rotating into me. What does this mean? Well, basically, because I'm tanking it, I'm going to be the one taking the damage from it. So I have to retreat immediately. Cupid is really out of position, and all I have is my number one, which is a cudgel. But, fortunately, we're able to take Nuwa out. I know Sobek cannot chase down the Cupid. And while I'm on low health, I do secure the kill. Now, this part gets amusing, because let's actually watch me here. Let's watch the Dukes. God, I should be counting. I think this is five. And six missed. Gets the throw. Hits hits one. Miss seven. Eight. Hits one. Nine. Ten. Hits one. He missed about ten to eleven shots then. And in the end, they didn't bother picking up our blue. They didn't take advantage of the positional uh, advantage they gain going one for one there but we did get first blood and so therefore we are ahead they don't take the blue buff as I said and Cupid is able just to sort of stroll back into the lane just as usual so that was a really good trade for me there dying in that situation is absolutely fine and I'm able to come back not too long later and rejoin Cupid in the lane they are now doing their blue buff, which again is, is part of the reason why they lost their positional advantage because and her let Sobek solo it and it's really hurt Sobek. So it's unfortunate for them, you're seeing a gank going on in mid. Nuwa gets ganked. Brutalize is really hard to avoid, but Nuwa I believe, does survive that thanks to her uh, shroud ability. I solo our blue buff here, which puts me at the same disadvantage that Sobek is on. But I do take it, and because I soloed the buff, it's going to take me up to level 2, catching me up in its levels and um, gold. What you're hearing there is actually a phone call. Apologies. Um, so, sitting in lane here, I know I'm not going to get the timers for this first mid camp. Tier is already over there. Uh, but the timers are kind of off because uh, they didn't take the mid camp at the start. The Jonqui and the Fenrir because they're ahead and uh, slightly better position they're going to be able to take this. Now, I imagine they should attack here. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. Jonqui pops his ultimate onto the Nuwa who has absolutely no escape from those demons. And I believe Tia should go the same way. That's a tower dive by Fenrir. Very good play on his part. Picking Jonqui up and surely, not Jonqui, Tia I should say. Over here we've been having a bit of a skirmish and we nearly took Sobek's life. Yeah, there goes the uh, tier in the jungle. So, it, basically Wukong is one of the best skirmishes. He, he deals well off fights, especially with a Cupid who can heal him up. The stun does go down though, um, as Anher jumps away. Let's spectate and see what happens here. I do miss my Tiger, but get it on the way back round. Surely this is a kill. Cupid dashes forward. I land my Cudgel and we just need one more shot. Two more shots. There's the kill for Cupid. So there's a kill on me now and Cupid, and that is a death on and her. That's going to allow me to rotate quite easily for the timer coming up on this mid camp. As you can see, their positioning is again worse. Just taking a look at solo lane, I believe it's quite an equal fight right now, with Ra being just slightly in the lead. But if you look at my farm, I'm second highest farmed in the game. 
That is the power of Sun Wukong. He's extremely mobile. They've played properly and aggressively with lots of good usage of Hand of the Gods. If you look, when I, when I died the first time, I actually had enough gold to buy an Eye of Providence and Hand of the Gods at level 2. That's given me a huge advantage coming on into the rest of the game because my rotations are just that much swifter and I just have far more wards up. Serbek has gone exactly the same way, picking up that Eye of Providence too. So we're going to be warding equally and our map vision is going to be very similar. Again, there's a sort of skirmish going around in mid. The real fight is happening over here as Cupid drops out Fields of Love and her fires off his ultimate to survive the crowd control. And I realize I cannot follow into that at this level. Not right now. There's a possibility of me ulting for the kill, however. Let's actually see what I choose to do here. Oh yeah, Cupid just drops out a couple of hearts. It's going to allow me to refill his mana. Uh, there's a good gank over there on Ra. We are now 5-1 and one up with a... Uh, 1,700 gold lead. But the positioning is really bad for Anher Her here. He should not be standing around. I know he has a jump to escape, but I could have taken advantage of that very easily. Instead, I consider the mid-rotate before changing my mind when I realize there just isn't really that much there for me. Often, you'll notice I leave uh, lane between waves. This is going to often lull the enemy team into a false sense of security. And uh, I'm not going to actually move, lose any gold as long as it's only between waves. Uh, looking over here, we have a small fight over the blue buff. Tear is coming in. It actually looks like uh, everybody's grouping up here, but does not seem like a real fight is going to happen. Freya does land the banish, which is hopefully going to deter them. Back over here, I've just been uh, basically getting damage over onto An Her. Oh, this is... Uh, it's a foolish move by Sobek. He does force my ult out, but what my ult is going to do is actually going to allow me to jump onto the An Her and heal myself. I get thrown away by Sobek. Fenrir misses the brutalize in quite an embarrassing fashion, but I believe Cupid is going to be able to clean this up with an easy heart bomb. Well played on our team's side. Uh, Field of Love does go out, and I believe we follow into this. Yeah, Fenrir gets it with his unbound attack. I can't remember what it's called. Um, it might be unbound, it might be exactly that, but I'm unable to take the tower to save his life. Mid, Nuwa v Jean Kui, probably not really a very good matchup for Nuwa. Nuwa doesn't have many good matchups. Uh, Jean Kui isn't one of our worst, but he's playing quite well. I mean, if Nuwa, if, Nuwa, uh, if Nuwa has one thing, it's very good mid camp defense. Oh! I had no idea this happened. He pops his ultimate to fight her, forcing her ultimate out, and they're trading quite steadily here. But it looks like. He's gonna get the last. Oh! That was beautiful! <laughs> I had no idea that happened. Really well played by Nuwa. Getting the kill. A narrow escape indeed. I'm back at spawn here, and Cupid is taking on his lane on his own. That was a really good fight. One thing Jean Kui has is a really good uh, basic attack fight with a lot of the basic attack gods early on because his basics basically split off into two different types of damage. We've got the book that fires one and his regular paintbrush shots. And it's actually going to accumulate to a little more than I imagine what Nuwa can produce at level 8. So it's a pretty fair fight. Nuwa's gone beads and sprint. You kind of have to do that with Nuwa. And she's gone telekey to try and keep up her clear and get some of that magical defense. If we look, Fenrir is slightly out of position and Tyr is considering a fearless. But Fenrir is two levels above and a fight isn't really what he wants. Again, I'm asserting my dominance over this and her. And this throw by Sobek was a huge mistake. I knock him up with my um, 72 transformations, I believe it's 72, uh, but unfortunately Cupid gets completely CC'd out of the way by Tyr, and there's actually very little I can do to save his poor innocent soul. The uh, Sobek grab is good, it mispositions him again, but Tyr is basically forced out. He decides to use his ultimate here, and then ends up healing off the creeps and just having to retreat. I sort of missed that, should have been spectating myself. Yeah, my ultimate lands on Sobek. I ulted then basically because I wanted an AoE attack, which I thought could possibly hit them both. And her comes at me full force. Now this is a mistake on Anher's part. He decides to fire off his ultimate. Why exactly he did this? Missing the vast majority of the shots. But he does manage to knock an impale. Uh, Anher has a decent fight against Sun Wukong, basically because he can knock Sun Wukong out of his stun and away from him. So, uh, and her is a reasonable counter. It's not a hard counter or anything. You'll notice Jean is able to poke down the tower quite successfully here. When Nuwa leaves lane, she's still level 8 as he hits level 11. So there's a 3 level difference, which is really an advantage you can 
um, and force on a new one. Uh, because there's one thing she needs, it's to be ahead. Who has a dangerous pick? And yeah, this is an easy kill for uh, our jungler. So it does rotate in quite successfully here while I'm back at spawn, but uh, I do not believe anyone on our team goes down for it. Yeah, there's that, just too great a level distance. Uh, jean Creed is far too tanky with his passive. Basically, the more demons he sucks up using his 2 ability, um, the more protections he gets. And Ra goes down to the Freya quite easily. Freya has a very good fight matchup against Ra. Freya with a reasonable amount of sustain herself. And just popping in and out of lane here, like I said before. Trying to get An her to leave his tower. But even if not, uh, we have positional advantage. You'll notice I'm not actually attacking the creeps. Uh, that's another reason why we want to try and force An her out. If we make sure the creeps um, exchange lives with each other, basically. Just fight each other and keep it just last hits them for the Heartseeker. The fight is going to be moved all the way down the lane. And An her for sitting in his tower, is basically going to get no... Uh, experience or gold. Good play by Sobet there, actually getting rid of my ward after placing his own. But uh, I realize this Anher has misplayed. We're able to jump in using my ultimate, Somersault Cloud, and yeah, I was just making sure I didn't need to basic that. Cupid gets the kill with Fields of Love, but I do get thrown through by Sobek here, which is unfortunate. I take more damage than I intended to, but honestly, in this position, I still, <laughs> I actually steal the kill with 72 transformations. So I was going for the stun to allow Cupid to secure the kill, but in the end, and oh, here comes Fire Giant. We hit 10 minutes in. Nuwa comes along, but can she fight a Son Wukong? Not when she misses that. Her fight is basically over then, and she has to retreat, and Jonkri is rotating in. I make the huge mistake of uh, 72 transformation. Uh, <laughs> 72 transformationing. Uh, I get lucky there, actually, backing away from the Anher. Straight into her stone golem, which, which has messed me up and brutalized too good. Down goes Tia for a Ragnarok. That was very good play on Fenrir's part, or very easy play, I should say. Uh, New Wire is again forced out of lane, and that will be her tower. Freya is. Uh, is she dead? Yeah, Freya is dead, so we'll play on Ra's part, able to push the tower up. But because Sun Wukong is actually not necessarily a uh, tank, he is a warrior, he has quite good clear. So can basically hold the solo lane on his own quite successfully. Uh, you can see the gank comes in from Fenrir here, but it's very half-hearted and a jump away by Anher is going to save him. Now, I notice a fight going on in the mid here as Jean Kui is getting quite low by a Sobet ultimate, but again, Sobet goes down to brutalize as I rotate in with my eagle form of 72 transformations, the bird of nope, but slightly too late. Now, Sun Kong has one of the best jump noises in the game. <laughs> when he jumps, he sort of claps his feet together. What I'm doing there is basically leeching the experience off the uh, buff camp. Didn't go and hit it because didn't want to steal any of the Heartseeker stacks. But again, all I have to do is take aggressive positioning on An Her, and he's going to use his mana, he's going to push himself back to his tower. <laughs> and I actually taunted him there, telling him he's facing the Great Sage. Uh, let's see what I choose to do here. Cupid thought I might be going for the blue buff, but uh, I was actually aware of how bad our positioning was and how good theirs was, so it's, it's actually 3v2 here as I walk back into the jungle. I misplay here, because I actually go to D-Ward while Cupid is really out of position from the Sobek and the uh, Tia. The Fields of Love goes off and I romp through. Uh, what I should have done here is actually just focus Sobek down and realize Cupid was dead. I ulted in the wrong direction, trying to follow him and peel for him, but uh, peeling, by the way, is when you use your abilities as a tank or any sort of supporty type god uh, in a more defensive manner to save your um, your teammates. So the best example will be Sobek's throw. Uh, you can use it both aggressively and defensively, and oh, Sobek is dead again. Brutalize is a uh, it's a really interesting ability. I realize the Zanher is dead as well based on our teammates' positioning. Tanking the tower just for long enough for another kill for Fenrir. So as I was saying, Brutalize. Ooh, this is actually a pretty dodgy fight based on our positioning here. I'm gonna spectate Nuwa and see what she does. Uh, Uses Brutalize defensively there, and I transform into her. Unfortunately, I do not hit her. I run out just before. But I believe Zhang has all the power in the world. Our positioning here is really bad. Like, if the enemy team actually had their cooldowns, they would be able to do something to us. But 
I just sort of... Um, I'm sort of taunting here by backing. I'm trying to make sure Tear doesn't focus anyone specifically. Uh, bit of a wasted blink by Tear there. I, I do decide to um, taunt. That was rude of me. Uh, yeah, as I was saying, let's finally get through the sentence. Smite is a pretty fast-paced game, so it can be very difficult to keep up with any sort of extra commentary. Brutalize is basically the attack, which once you aim it and land it on the enemy, all of your attacks are going to follow. It's about four following attacks. Um, and no matter where they go, if they jump, if they teleport, you will follow them. They will die <laughs> if they are low on health. So it's an absolutely fantastic ability, and this is why I'm really chuffed that Fenrir has come back into the meta because he's such a powerful god and I just think he's a lot of fun to play and play against on on the whole. Um, a little bit of a skirmish again as Freya misses her banish but oh god Brutalize I believe again is able to easily decimate Tyr as I rotate into the duo lane. Just putting some poke onto Sobek is fine by me. Not a particular mana heavy god is Son Wukong so I'm able to threaten a lot and not really have to worry about my uh, mana. The poke is real. Uh, a surrender vote actually goes out by the enemy team. They're down 20 to 6. 6k gold. They do refuse this one. Uh, the game goes on for almost double this time overall. So, uh, I used the bird. To f oh no, I used the tiger here. Just because I couldn't get the angle right to use the bird. Uh, basically, 72 transformations is a very interesting uh, ability. There are actually 72 transformations. There are three. There is the um, there's the tiger, the ox, and the eagle. The eagle is your chief defensive um, move. I notice Jean Queen is getting surrounded here, but he's such a tanky god. Basically, takes no damage from tear popping his ultimate. This is a very good fight for him. All of a sudden, he's able to easily destroy tear. The slow off the new uh, ultimate does stop me from landing my stun, but... Ooh, she's too fast. I seem to remember that being a kill for us, but apparently not. Uh, Anna is rotating in, but I don't think the Sobek should live. As I again use 72 transformations incorrectly. A much better ultimate this time by Anna, but not one that's really going to threaten us, as I believe like full health Jean Kui rotates in here and completely turns the fight around. I'm aware of this. I'm going to use my Tiger Form to stun the Anher and end his life quickly. Now as I was saying, uh, as this fight somewhat comes to a close... Oh god, I still didn't back as Sean Queen goes in again and gets the kill. God damn it, it's hard to commentate over this. Yeah, 72 transformations is basically a multi-utility uh, ability. So you got your bird, which is your escape. Uh, I believe it's immune to knock-ups. I don't think it's immune to CC. Uh, but it's going to allow you to very quickly move out of most situations. One of the best escapes and rotation abilities in the game. Then you have the Tiger. The Tiger is a stun. It does a reasonable amount of damage. It's got a lot of base damage, which is why he works well as a tank. Um, and finally we have the Ox Form. The Ox Form is a knock-up. It's, it's a very good interrupt. And it also can be a good escape. Just as good as the Eagle on occasion. If you want to knock enemies out of the way in the process. Uh, it's probably the least useful of his uh, transformation forms, but also certainly worth having, you know. Uh, it can easily remove things like Magi's Blessings as well. Oh, this is a, a pretty ballsy play on my part. I am the support tank, but I am a level ahead of Anher. I'm able to not only steal this damage buff, pick it up, but also just to completely maim him with the help of Jean Queen. Honestly, a better play might have been leaving the uh, damage buff to Jean Queen, but if you look down at my build, I am going from the hide of the urchin which is a multi-defense item into the heavy mace which i'm going to transform into a jotun's wrath basically the items got changed slightly so uh we have lots of new tier one and tier two items but this is aggressive for a tank the jotun's wrath, wrath is going to give me extra cooldown time and cooldowns is very important on the support tank uh not a very comfortable fight for us here jean Kui doesn't have an escape but if you look he is double the level of sobek Seven levels above Tia, and um, five levels above Nuwa, so honestly, no one's going to hurt him. I have to retreat from this one, try to stun Tia and save Jean Kui's life, ends up getting the kill with my two ability, which is a simple knock-up. Very good for uh, interrupts, basically. 
And a good push here, though uh, my team decides to leave me, is going to let me take the middle tower on my own. The enemy team is forced to retreat, Ra is stuck behind his own tower clearing. Same thing for An Her. So it's a very good decision for a reasonably powerful um, physical based support tank to try and take down this tower. A certain divert has started, they are 26 to 6 and they still think there is a way out for them. This one confuses me. The first one possibly. But you're even further behind now, so... And as you can see, I'm able to uh, trade quite evenly with uh, Nuwa here. If I was able to actually land my 72 transformation successfully, the kill definitely would have been the worst as I ult onto her, but the Sobet throw is going to save her life. She wastes her own ultimate. And what I do here is pretty tricky, using the Bird of Nope or the Eagle to shoot around all their abilities, including the Ra ultimate. If that had landed, I would have died. Let's take a look at the actual fight here. As Kier blinks in sort of unnecessarily, we are on full retreat. Uh, and we even have a Jean-Kui who could rotate into this, and I believe he does. Turn the fight completely around as always. This Jean-Kui is such a long way ahead. If you notice, uh, as a support tank... Ooh, the ultimate goes off by Jean-Kui. He likes to solo people a lot. The Jean-Kui is very, very aggressive. Um... What I'm going to go into in a second is the level difference, but if we look at Cupid, he's actually pushing this tower very successfully. If you are a uh, reasonably well-leveled uh, ADC, in fact, even if you're not, just as an ADC, it's often worth staying in your lane, not rotating, and picking up the kills. As jean Kui kills Nuwa for her... Uh, how many deaths has she had? This is her seventh death. Nuwa has no escape. It's, it's hard being Nuwa. I feel for her, I really do. I love Nuwa as a god, and I, I just don't think she has a place, um, because she doesn't fit in anywhere. I call here a support tank, I like to try and take a more sort of coachy role, so I call out to do the Gold Fury here, I know the positioning is bad, and I know our positioning is good, I know our damage is good, because of our level advantage, and my level 3 hog is up, so uh, I can contest it if they were to come. That's an easy Gold Fury, as Tier comes to have a peek at what's going on. You'll notice 72 transformations is faster than Tia, so I'm easily able to catch up with him. Landing that for a very powerful stun, the knock-up followed by jean Kui's paintbrush attacks. It's going to take him out. You'll notice sometimes I don't know the uh, name of the ability. That's just because I don't really play the god a lot. Um, I don't know all of Sun Wukong's abilities, for example, because I have only played them about 12 games. Just enough to master him. So that's where the confusion lies. Uh, as I transform again in an attempt to catch Ra, but Ra's slow does affect you in your Tiger form. Slightly wasted Ragnarok. Oh, is going to allow Fenrir to take out Ra with relative ease. So, again, like I was saying, let's look at levels. So, Beck is level 10, I am level 16. This disparity is massive. It's basically due to a powerful Wukong mid game. God, Fenrir has such cool taunts. Um. I'm a bit hesitant here, by the way. This is a mistake. I probably should just walk in and tanked it, but I'm not as tanky as my teammates might think I am, uh, having built into the Jotun's Wrath. So that's why I'm slightly hesitant to tank the tower and allow us to take it. But Cupid and Jean-Cui are taking the left side tower. That's going to be another 300 gold in all of our pockets. Um, but let's just do cross-leveling here. We've got uh, the Anher at level 14. He hasn't leveled up in a very long time. To Cupid's level 17. We've got... Uh, Two level 20s and a level 19 on our team. Their highest level is level 17 in the solo lane as Tia goes down again. I believe that might have been to me. I am 4 one 12 at this point. Uh, the Wukong rotation ability along with his damage is definitely going to allow him to get more kills and assists than the majority of support tanks. Freya does get thrown here but uses her ultimate um, Valkyrie's discretion to avoid the new uh, 3 which is of course that stun fire attack. You'd think I'd know the name of uh, Nuwa's abilities, seeing as how I play her so much, but uh, apparently I don't. But here's where we finally decide to group up and take the last tower, the right side tower. Um, the level difference is just going to allow for an easy take. Uh, the closest level gap is a gap of two. Oh, I ult here actually to take the large brunt of the uh, tower with my decoy. But honestly, what we should be doing here, I do believe jean Kui thought I was trying to attack there. What we wanted to do was just attack the tower. Uh, another surrender vote goes out, but 32 to 6, is, is it still not enough for you? I don't know who it is refusing. It could be Ra, because he's the only one that isn't particularly underleveled, or Nuwa, or Anha. They're the only ones that are in a terrible, terrible position. As the Ragnarok goes off, that did a quarter of Tia's health. 
and I actually steal the kill there with 72 transformations. I meant to use it to stun him. It does more damage than you expect, and I, I back really aggressively here. That could be a mistake as a lesser, less tanky god, but knowing that I still have cooldowns and escapes, that's a fair decision by me. And the whole team backs, which is actually a very good idea. If you back together, you basically cancel out any proportion of damage they did to you in the fight. So you win a fight and you all back, it's a straight one fight. Hanging on for too long is going to give them the chance to win the fight right back at you. So let's get back to spectating me and see what I do at this point. I believe I go and contest the mid camps. Whether this is a mistake or not, I don't know. I end up using my level 3 hog, I believe, to take these against the Ra. I'm the same level as Ra, though. I do secure both of them. So it was a win. And yeah, no, it was probably a decent use of the Hand of the Gods as I ward to get rid of the ward that Sobek literally just placed up there. Uh, with a sort of eight level difference, there's nothing they can do. Uh, the enemy team really should have farmed, but because of our consistent presence in both the solo and the duo lane, it's very hard for them to find a safe place to farm. And equally, we were very present within the jungle throughout, so uh, there was nothing we could do there. So bet he's lurking in the waters here to deal very little damage to either me or um, Fenrir, but a good stun by Nuware is going to slow down our advance. Ra catches himself out of position and I use the bird because the bird is immune to slows. It's going to allow me to keep up with him during his retreat, but obviously not stun him. Moving on, I believe I call to do the fire giant here, yeah? And instead we walk over to here. Uh, I could solo tier as a support tank, which is always a sign that the game is going very well, as we're all about to top level. I'm level 18, that's the lowest level on the team, but if you look, I am the third highest farm, and I'm only about 100 gold behind the highest farm god in the game, so that tells you just how much presence Wukong is able to have. We take the Fire Giant here, which is basically good game, because with the Fire Giant we can take at least two of the phoenixes and most likely take the game. So I believe Ra goes down here so easily to a brutalized Freya combination. Freya's damage is insane at this, uh, at this part of the game and I just sort of stand here and zone, not allowing Sobek who is possibly the only hope of any sort of brow control or comeback um, to get into the fight. Now as a team losing, there's only really one way that you can win. And that is with crowd control. They do have a high crowd control team. By the way, Cupid does more damage than I expect here, and I do steal the kill from him. But at this stage in the game, it does not matter. In fact, what it's going to allow me to do is try and catch up and uh, get the highest gold farm in the game. As the middle Phoenix goes down, and uh, I tank the left side Phoenix quite easily, knowing my ultimate is ready. The Titan is under attack. Tia just comes up using his ultimate. That, that was nothing. Tia had no chance at that point. No Fearless would have saved him, and that is game. As I was saying, as a team, the Witch is losing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That makes me lag pretty considerably. One second.